It's my body, it's my right to put into it what I want. And again, I absolutely would have agreed with that position. But I stand in front of you as somebody who's got permanent brain damage from my addiction. I've got stomach damage, uh, which my vocal cords are affected because I have enzymes coming up in my stomach. I've also got a, a problem going on with my, with my bladder. I've got to go and see a urologist in a few weeks' time. That's probably been caused by the ketamine in, the, in all the ecstasy pills I took. Who's going to pick up the bill for my treatment? The NHS. The NHS cannot for, afford implications <coughs> of legalising drugs. <coughs> yes, this is not a perfect war, but the figures, as we've heard from, from people on this side, are much lower for illegal substances than for the legal substances. I genuinely believe that if we legalise drugs, we will see similar figures, if not greater. I don't know how many of you have tried crack cocaine. I have. It's very nice. It's very addictive. How many of you have tried crystal meth? Wonderful drug. Fortunately, I didn't try it. I'd probably be dead if I had. You know, these are drugs that many people will try, maybe once, and will lose control of. And then what happens? Do you know how much it will cost our mental health services? Our mental health services cannot cope with the problem we've got with the cannabis psychosis now. Many young people out there are not being treated for their addiction because they do not have physical dependency. They have psychological dependency. Well, I can tell you as an addiction therapist, the physical dependency is the easy bit to treat. It's the psychological dependency that takes years. You know, I'm in recovery one day at a time. You know, if I don't do a daily program, I could relapse and be back where I was. You know, it's an, it's an ongoing daily uh, recovery process. Okay, today, rather strangely, um, I actually had a client who I went to visit today in an Oxford hospital. I saw him for two hours, a lovely young man. Both of his parents came to this university. He's been sectioned for most of the last two years. Uh, he's not achieving anything like the life he should be having. He hasn't had a girlfriend since 2008. He's locked up. He has been through a desperate, desperate time. I spoke to him a little bit, and I asked him if he minded me sharing without obviously describing who he is or anything like that. He started using cannabis back in 2004, the very year that the Home Secretary moved cannabis from Class B to Class C. And I was actually in the parks doing outreach work during that time, and I saw the impact that that reclassification had on young people's perception of cannabis. People really did think, oh, well, it's just a bit of puff, it's just a safe drug. Well, at that very time, cannabis was becoming more potent. I'm not saying that all of you who smoke cannabis are going to experience problems. I really hope you won't. But there will be a sizable number, especially those people who start smoking before 18, who do experience difficulties. And cannabis dependency is really difficult to treat, I can tell you, because you have cognitive impairment. You, we've heard about the IQ points. You have concentration problems, memory problems. You find it difficult to get up in the morning and attend your therapy session. I wanted to talk about legal highs. The thing that really clinched this argument for me was the legal highs issue. I'm on the ACMD, and when I first got appointed, I was very like this about classification. I just wanted to be there because I'm a person in recovery, and I'm the only person in recovery. I saw what happened with methadrone. Methadrone, plant food, as it was marketed, and it was marketed on social media. It was so freely available. It was being sold on my very social media websites. Yeah? Methadrone... Um, when it finally got classified overnight, it went from pocket money prices to a higher price. You know, I had those young people coming to see me saying, well, this drug's legal. It, surely there can't be a harm attached to it. And of course there is. We're now seeing people with methadrone addiction who are actually injecting methadrone. You know, the horse has bolted with that drug. And I really do think that we need to actually speed up the process of classifying legal highs. And that classification process does work. You know, it does reduce the supply, but more importantly, we have to look at the demand. And I ask you to think about why it is that we live in a world where so many people want to destroy themselves, why so many people are so stressed and anxious and unhappy living their lives that they want to put toxic substances into themselves. Yes, uh, the war on drugs, uh, um, the war on drugs is, is, sorry, I've lost my point, I knew I was going to take Okay. Um, I would ask you all to think about freedom, to stand up for the freedom, to live in a world where more dangerous drugs are not available on the high street and addiction, addiction rules. Stand up to the dealers. Support those people who need treatment. <coughs> I just want to tell you a very quick story. Addiction, yeah, very quick story. <laughs> um, 
I had, I had somebody come to my house drunk and high one morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. I said to her, if she didn't give me her car keys, that I would have to call the police. She didn't give me her car keys. I called the police and had her arrested, and she lost her license. I stood up to her. I set a firm boundary. It's called tough love in my business. Okay, a year later, I saw her at a funeral. She is walking towards me, really angry. I'm thinking, oh no, she's going to hit me. This is terrible. Okay, she came up to me, and she threw her arms around me. And she said, thank you. You're the only person who ever stood up to me in my addiction. You set a boundary I couldn't break, and I'm now clean and sober. It's so important that we have classification. It's so important that we, we stand up to the people who don't care about your minds. Do you think the Chinese chemists care about your minds? You've got some of the best minds in the world. They don't care. Please protect yourselves. Protect each other from harm. Oppose this motion. <laughs>